Hi, Darlene. Okay. Oh, will you um, host me, please? Hello. Hi, how are you? Hey. It's going. Good, good, good. Good. Hi, everyone. We're just going to give it a minute for the rest of the committee. I know I also have a representative from the DOE Fund joining as well. Okay. Um, now there's Jennifer Mitchell, okay. the CEO. Let's elevate her. You also have Robert Cornegi on. Do you want to elevate him as well? Yes. That would be great. Oh, thank you. I don't see him. Is he under his own name? Yeah, he's there. Oh, here we go. I got him. Okay. Well, hello. Hello, CLC committee. I feel like I haven't seen you all in so long. <laughs> um, do we have quorum? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we do. So we're just missing one. Well, great. Okay. Um, welcome to the June 2023 meeting of the Community Board 2 Cannabis Licensing Committee. Um, we are going to hear a presentation from Union Square Travel Agency about their plans for expansion to a larger, expanding into a larger location attached to their existing location that faces Broadway at 13th Street. Um, before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge uh, representatives from our elected officials. Nicole Bart is here. That's all I see from our elected officials. And um, introduce our committee, Vice Chair of Cannabis Licensing Committee, Cheryl Wu, committee member Patricia Laria, William Benish, Anthony Wong. Hello. And uh, that's it. You guys can say hello. Um, Christina, I am going to demote you. <laughs> As you are not here in an official capacity, but we're very happy that you're here. Um, okay. So uh, a few things. I wanted to let you guys know that there is new legislation as of May 3rd, I believe. Um, I'll share a link shortly. Oh, Will is here from Grace Lee's office. Thank you, Will, for coming. Um, so there's new legislation around enforcement, cannabis, illicit cannabis enforcement. Um, it greatly expands the fines and the penalties. It expands the powers of taxation and finance and the OCM to be able to seize and shut down these illicit dispensaries um, and really hit them where it hurts, which is in the pocket book. Um, so I'll share specifics about that. There's a lot. Um, the second thing is we've actually seen an uptick since then in enforcement. Um, just Thursday, there was a huge enforcement action 
The press is saying there were seven, but I know for a fact that there were more because I saw one in a dispensary on 28th Street and Broadway that was not even listed in any of the press. So Thursday, there was a huge enforcement action. Um, it was the sheriff's office, the OCM and taxation and finance, and they shut down a ton of dispensaries, including three or four, in, no, three in our district. So 736 Broadway, 738 Broadway, and 790 three Broadway, as well as um, 510 LaGuardia, which is the one right around the corn corner from SMAC. They got those all on the same day. When I get stats on how much they seized and you know what's happening going forward, I will definitely shoot the committee an email. So that said, I would like to welcome back Arena Hink and Biggers, the, uh, what are you, CEO, president? President, yes. President <laughs> of the Union Square Travel Agency, um, known to us as the Joe Store LLC, um, to present plans about their expansion, which we're really excited to hear about. So, Arena, oh, and I'd like to acknowledge the fact that our wonderful chair, Susan Kent, is with us. And Robert Carnegie, but you can introduce your team. <laughs> I'm you. Thank Thank you so much, Mar. So joining me today is the uh, recently appointed uh, CEO of the Doe Fund, Jennifer Mitchell. Um, she's been involved with the organization for a very, very long time. So we're super excited to have her back to the not-for-profit and leadership role. And she's been incredibly supportive um, upon her arrival. Since her arrival, uh, hopefully she'll say a few words after my brief presentation. We also are joined by Robert Carnegie, our special advisor and uh, conciliar and kind of, uh, you know, uh, the, gl the, the glue that sticks us all together is also on the line here, Robert. Um, and thank you so much for inviting us back. We've been operational now for about four months, um, since February 16th or so, so just shy of four months. And thus far, you know, operations have been going really well. Before we opened, we had a really uh, great conversation with the residents who lived above, giving them a tour of the space. We also brought in various different divisions of the NYPD, and we've been in constant contact with both parties since then. The operational plan that we presented at the end of last year, we've been able to realize fully. I think things have actually gone better than expected in terms of uh, the minimal impact in the community. So we haven't really seen much queuing at all, except maybe around four, on 420 because of the way we design the space. So we have a, a, a significantly sized vestibule where we're able to contain any queuing so that we're able to eliminate people lining up outside. Um, we have a really strong security team who are also very kind and respectful and friendly that continue to push folks along who attempt to light up outside and loiter outside of the shop. Um, we've been really great neighbors in trying to just maintain that corner in a clean um, and secure and safe way and add to the quality of life of that neighborhood, especially that corner. Um, you know, we unfortunately, we still do have a construction fence up, which has seen quite a bit of graffiti, um, but we're, we're going to be bringing that down very, very soon prior to our opening, which should hopefully occur mid to end July. Um, and I know we shared some plans with the committee in advance, a number of a letter of support. We continue to do outreach with local businesses. We've done some cross marketing with a couple of local businesses in the area, uh, the neighboring bar, Pure Bar, another a, a couple of other smaller businesses in the area. Strand's a big supporter of us. Um, and we've also forged additional partnerships with not for profits. I think we'd mentioned two of the major ones the last time around, but CJEI, the Cannabis Justice and Equity Initiative, just actually launched their program last week, which was founded by Terrence Coffey, a graduate of the Doe Fund. He's now an adjunct professor at NYU. And he developed a curriculum with the Cannabis Workforce Initiative, which has been accredited by Cornell University. And so this is a um, curriculum for folks who are recently released from prison through the Exodus program. They have a cohort of 25 individuals, of, uh, good, more or less half women, half men. Um, so we're going to be a part of that curriculum program and helping to also employ as many folks as possible in our dispensary once they graduate this August. 
We continue to have a great relationship with Unlock. Uh, I think I sent a long letter of support there, which is also a new organization, Joshua Greenberg. And um, Joshua, I may think I have his name last name wrong, but Joshua has been a great friend and he's actually helped to send us a number of candidates over, which we have since hired. So legacy folks who are committed to going legal. Um, actually our head bud tender is an individual that we received through that network and he has since been promoted. He's now our content, content lead. So he's um, going out in the community and going to different events to create contact for our socials. You've done, you know, we, to date we've hired um, over 60 bud tenders. They're primarily people of color from low income communities, from communities that have been disproportionately impacted by the war on drugs. And we offer them, you know, full benefits, medical and dental. We also, also offer them reimbursement for travel, for lunch, but also access to networking events um, and tickets to networking events so they can leverage this opportunity for bigger and better things. We continue to do ongoing bud tender training. I think we might have mentioned we did like a very, very intensive week-long pay training uh, at the beginning of their employment period, but we continue to do weekly trainings with brands and they come in. So they have opportunities to, to learn more about the products we sell um, and to also just network within the industry. So, you know, I feel strongly that we're, we're committing um, you know, we're contributing to the community in a meaningful way and have really forged these meaningful substantive partnerships that continue to grow and evolve over time. The space we're meeting, moving into is only slightly larger than our current space. Our current space at ground level is 2,100 square feet. The space we're moving into is 2,700 square feet. It does take up the corner parcel, which you know, given the, the gorgeous design and the security that we'll have in place, I'm really hopeful that it will contribute to the beautification of this corner in the neighborhood. We worked with an award-winning architecture firm named Leong Leong, a pair of brothers from Hawaii. They're Asian American. They're based here in Chinatown and they have, they're award-winning, but they've worked on lots of really incredible projects from contemporary art museums, high end retail, but also senior housing and affordable housing. And they're really committed to building spaces that bring communities together. They're very much socially minded. And so they've been just a really incredible to work with. Um, so, you know, I feel confident that the design that they have um, put forth and that we're implementing in that space is really going to add quite a bit of beauty and um, and uh, serenity is, is one word. Their, their design is very serene and beautiful and really add value and help to beautify that corner because that corner kind of has been a, an eyesore since it's been a vacant retail space for a while. Um, we're maintaining the same hours of operations. Um, so, and we also will have the same design and layout, similar, a very similar design, which contains a, a vestibule to allow for interior queuing. Um, so that is, um, I definitely would love to hear questions. Maybe Jennifer, do you wanna add first or should we do questions, Mara, what do you recommend? Um, uh, Jennifer, if you would like to address us, we'd love to hear from you and, and welcome and congratulations on the new gig. <laughs> you can't unmute. <laughs> well, nice to meet you. No, I can't, no, I can't. I can now. For some reason, it wasn't letting me. So hi, everybody. It is a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm so excited for this partnership, and I'm so excited to be here with Arena tonight. So again, I'm Jennifer Mitchell. I spent from 2000 to 2011 running programs for the Doe Fund. Um, I left in 2011. I've been executive director of another nonprofit called the HOPE Program, um, which has workforce development programs in both Bronx and Brooklyn for the past decade and rejoined the Doe Fund uh, two months ago, uh, but knew I was rejoining um, back in February. So was here for the opening of the store. Um, and it's been really exciting. And, you know, Arena has really given a, a comprehensive update, but I just want to say we're really proud as the nonprofit partner um, that there's been so much positive feedback, so much positive press. Um, as I assume most of you have been in the store, there's big signage that um, acknowledges kind of the partnership with the Doe Fund. We now are giving out our collateral at the store um, starting this week. And so um, we've gotten 
almost exclusively really positive feedback um, on this and, um, and look forward to the bigger store opening uh, in late July. And I'm, I, I'm happy to take questions um, as well, uh, but really happy to be here and to be part of this community in a way that I think is really forward thinking and cutting edge and innovative. And, uh, and so thank you. Thank you. Um, Robert, would you like to say anything? Uh, I'm here in a support role, but I definitely wanted to add to uh, what Arena said, um, you know, about how important it has been uh, for us to be a good neighbor. Um, and I think the, the, the letter uh, from the condo board that should have been submitted, I'm sure Arena submitted, is a testament to the fact that we strive um, to make sure that our presence uh, has no negative, little to no negative impact. And I think that kind of is a testament. So that's that's all I would add. And and thank you for allowing a, a community board three former uh, member uh, to, to, to be part of this. Uh, and I'll, I'll report back that you guys run a tight ship. Thank you, Robert. Um, all right, great. So I would like to start off the questions. Um, so you didn't put the date on your application, so it's gonna be late July. Yeah, we're aiming for July 20th ish. So right. it's contingent on construction, which is never the most predictable. Absolutely. And, um, you know, we haven't received any complaints. I personally have only heard great things. Um, have there been any issues? Have you had any challenges? And um, if so, how did you overcome them? Um, I would say the issues we've had really have just been quality of life issues in the neighborhood. So we had an issue, I'm thinking this is just top of mind because it was quite recent. Uh, an individual was kind of defecating on the side of the construction fence inside of the condo residence door. So we had to reconfigure the construction fence a little bit because it was an ongoing issue. Um, so we rejigger the construction fence to disallow for the privacy that the initial design of the fence had created. Um, I know there were some noise issues. There were some employees from FedEx across the street who are blasting music out of their car. And you know, everyone points to us to kind of, you know, we're, we have the, the biggest presence, right? Because we have a, a large staff. We have always a security team outside. But we went over and asked those employees of FedEx across to turn the music down and they complied. They were incredibly responsive. Um, those are just the, the minor issues really I, that we've experienced. We haven't had any security issues or any, um, you know, any security concerns even whatsoever. Um, you know, the patrons who frequent the dispensary have been really quite wonderful. They're a diverse group of folks. We skew older, so really 30s and 40s. Um, you know, every day becomes a little bit more more uh, female in skew, um, but we have a really highly educated, amazing group of folks and just a really incredibly diverse group of people that come in um, that are always just really lovely to interact and exchange with. Like, I don't think it's uh, what necessarily folks assumed would be our average or typical clientele. We have a really incredible a uh, group of folks who, who frequent um, and they, they've really been incredibly respectful of the community um, and just uh, we're really proud to for our incredibly supportive customer base. Um, but I can't think of Robert, Jennifer, are there any other issues? I can't think of any issues um, besides, you know, like operational stuff like Dutchie shutting down during your 420, which is, <laughs> I mean, that was the biggest issue. Um, but, you know, that's been about it, really. Uh, we've had very great employee retention. Uh, I think there's only a, the 50 butt tenders we've hired. I think only three have left since then. Um, so, you know, folks are, our employees are really an incredible group of individuals who are really enthusiastic and really, um, you know, eager to learn and just really excited to be there and set this incredible tone. and. Um, created an amazing culture thanks to our VP of retail who really has um, uh, created this incredible space and helped to, to train these amazing individuals who work with us. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, 
And by the way, I saw somebody defecate on that very intersection in 1992. So it might be the corner. It might be the corner. Yeah, it was pretty brutal there for a while. <laughs> so, Welcome um, to the <laughs> yeah, I don't know, maybe that's the spot. Hi, I see you, William. I have one last question. Um, in your original offering, there were plans for the landlord to restore the historical facade of the building. And it seems that that has been, is not happening. I mean, I dig the ultra modern, you know, design you guys are offering now, but what happened with that? Well, there was always a plan to match the current facade that, of the space that we're in right now. So the current facade definitely has those cast iron columns. My understanding is when they reopened all those windows, the cast iron columns were no longer there. Um, so I think they they definitely reopened the window lines that were in existence prior to, I guess it was potentially Chase who covered the entire window line, um, but they salvaged as much as they could. And unfortunately there weren't much, there wasn't much left of those cast iron columns in that location. Oh, that's unfortunate. I know. William? Thanks, thanks, Mar. Um, my question is, uh, sorry if I missed this, what's happening to the current space? Is it just reverting back to the landlord or is it gonna be part of the overall new space and you're gonna continue to use it? Sorry if I just missed that one point. No, no, it's a great question. We're moving all of the retail operations to the corner. Um, so for the time being, that space will just be used for deliveries. Um, we'll also do some bud tender training. We're also hoping to do some additional training with our not-for-profit partners as well. Um, and ultimately, we'd love to do some consumer-facing educational programming, really small events to help educate consumers about cannabis and CBD. And But that's down the line. We just don't have the bandwidth to do that right now. Primarily, it'll just be used for delivery. Okay, thank you. Yes, that is number seven on the resolution <laughs> that it will be delivery. Um, Patricia? Um, that corner has large windows. And I, from your rendering, could you talk a bit more about how you're going to, um, like, sh you know, disguise the windows so that no one can see in? It looks very corporate from the rendering. Yeah. <laughs> the facade, the signage, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, so the um, there actually will be some decorative vinyls. The windows that abut the retail floor are, are all blacked out. And the only windows where you'll be able to see into the space are within the vestibule area. So the only space you'll be able to look into from the street is the vestibule. The retail floor windows are all being blacked out because we can't um, allow for cannabis products to be seen from the street per the regulations. Um, so it, yeah, you see here that second window from the corner is all blacked out and all the other uh, windows are also blacked out. It looks great. This is, yeah. I, I put the package in the chat, but if you didn't see it, it's just such a lovely space. Is that the vestibule I'm looking at that where people would be congregating before? Yes, they really should be queuing. They won't be, but I guess if there's no queue, they will be congregating. But yes, they're they're meant to queue around that circular installation. Oh, okay. And okay, this thank sales you. Floor. And this is the sales floor? Yes, this is the sales floor. We're adding uh, three POS stations on that linear counter. And we're adting two uh, touch screens, self-serve touch screens. Um, so we'll have a little bit more capability to, to move more people in and out just in case we have a you know higher volume in this location. What's this? This so this is the flower lounge. This is the kind of back room. It's meant to be like an educational uh, exhibit space. Uh, I won't have nearly as many cut out windows, but it really is to, meant to educate consumers about cannabis, um, the different species of the cannabis plant and terpenes. So there'll be 
some description on the wall describing the experience. The center console will have some faux cannabis plants, uh, sativa and indica and hybrid plant. Around the center console will be flower jars that you can actually lift up and smell. And there'll be a magnifying glass so you can see closely the buds. And then along the wall will be a sampling of actually seven terpenes that describe the various different um, aromas within all the cannabis plant and the, the impact it has on the cannabinoids, endocannabinoid system. And this hopefully will rotate, but it's meant to be like an educational experience. Well, it's I, I just want to add that our customer base uh, uh, tends to skew higher uh, education wise. And this is a, a kind of an ode to, to that. Yes, I think that's great. Um, there's some, something similar at the uh, THC Museum. So that's cool, and people really enjoy it. Um, do we have any other questions from the committee? No? Um, all right, do we have, oh, we have a question from Pete Davies. Go ahead, Pete. Uh, hi, thank you. Um, sorry about the noise you might hear. We have a local ambient band outside the windows and uh, playing up some music. Um, I was just curious, since you've been open for a while, can, uh, how has uh, business been compared to what you might've thought it would be, um, what you were hoping it would be? Uh, how does that relate to the illegal uh, dispensaries that are around? Just curious about that. Yeah, I mean, certainly there's there's grave competition from the unlicensed cannabis dispensary. And as you all know, there's just so many in this area. Um, and I think a lot of customers don't really understand fully the difference between licensed and unlicensed dispensaries or the value of shopping at a licensed dispensary. Um, so that's definitely been our biggest hurdle to date, for sure. Um, we've been hyper-focused on trying to educate customers and consumers and doing whatever we can to market the dispensary within the regulations, um, which has not been easy. It's been incredibly challenging. And, you know, um, it just within a very competitive market, probably one of the most in the entire world, it's not easy to bring new folks into the door. So, um, you know, obviously the unlicensed market has really contributed to that challenge. Good, Pete. Yep. Okay. Um, any other questions from the public? Mar, if I, if I could just add though, um, if you look at, um, our, our ratings, it has hovered around uh, a 4.8 out of five, uh, which is a testament to the fact that we have the, the what I've considered to be the best bud tenders uh, in the business and that education process has yielded us uh, a, you know, a constantly growing customer base and repeat customers and, and word of mouth. But there's no way that we haven't been negatively impacted by uh, the illegal, illegal shops. Uh, but the consistency around the education process, um, uh, we're hoping that coupled with the new legislation that has come down from the governor's office as it relates to enforcement, uh, we, we, we hope to see a brighter day. Wonderful. Yeah, I actually, you know, Dazed is so close to you guys. Ha has, has there been, have you had to make any adjustments since they opened? Um, we're constantly trying to improve performance. Um, there hasn't been anything that we correlate directly to their opening. Um, I, I definitely believe that there's more than enough market and space for lots of licensed dispensaries. Um, so nothing in particular that we've had to do to, to change our operations, just continue to improve every day. That's we good. also believe that a good solid competition is best for the customer. So you know, the, the customers are going to benefit tremendously by that close proximity because, you know, we keep trying to deliver a service and a product that is above and beyond. So the little competition uh, is, is good for the customers. 
Yes, and, and diversity of offerings is so important. I just got back from Toronto and every dispensary there is different than the next and so different. I mean, you just, they every place feels different. There's a different vibe and we don't really have that yet in New York because maybe we don't have that many and because we have DASNY build outs, but, <laughs> but I really look forward to the day where, you know, there's a market difference between every offering and it really is, it'll be great for the market, great for the customer and great for the operators, I think. William? Thanks, Mar. Yeah, I, I was just curious, you, you mentioned that, you know, the demographics of your customer base skew older, you mentioned higher levels of education. I, I was just curious how you're getting that data. Are, are you asking people to fill out sort of detailed demographic survey questions or whatnot? Uh, people actually doing that. I was just curious where that info was coming from. Yeah, we are asking people to fill out demographic info, um, but we also do get it from the ID scans and then we destroy the, we don't keep the personal information, just the stats. Okay, interesting. And then are you, are you able to share just kind of roughly how much you generated for the Doe Fund just in the few months you've been operating? Is that, uh, <laughs> is that public info yet or no? No, not quite yet. No. Okay. But <laughs> Can you we're close. We're close to meeting our goals. Can you share sales numbers? Don't feel quite comfortable sharing that yet because OCM hasn't made it public. Um, but happy to come back and give more detail once it is public. Okay, sure. That's fine. Um, do we have any? Oh, William, no. Sorry, no. That was a fake out. Um, <laughs> do we have any more questions, Susan? Oh, I was just hoping that I would love to hear you come back to us in a year and share with us your results, share with us your experiences. I think we would benefit from it. I'd love to hear, you know, about your success, about any difficulties you've had, but, you know, only time tells for so much of this stuff. And it would be really nice to to sort of get, you know, where are you a year a year out? We'd love to. That sounds great. Definitely. I'm sure we'll have a lot to learn. We've only been open for four months. So <laughs> we still and we learned a long row, road ahead of us. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we would we always love to hear from you. So um, that would be great. And you know, I also as I move around the city and as I talk to dispensary operators and, you know, one of the great things about some of these shops is they are becoming a stabilizing force in neighborhoods or areas that, you know, have been having issues, you know, with, I don't know, can we say vagrancy these days? Is that allowed to say anymore? I don't know, but just people, you know, around, not really doing anything or up to no good or, you know, whatever is going on. And that corner, as we were just saying, you know, when your store is open, you know, I know you won't be able to see inside, but there will be light. You will be providing light for a very dark corner. And I think that that's a great, and security cameras. And, and I think that can only be a great benefit to that area. So, um, yeah, Mar, we, we definitely believe that our presence is part of a, a kind of subtle crime prevention, right? If you if you if you ask any, you know, crime prevention pro professionals, they will tell you where you light an area and where there's more traffic, there's less likely to be negative activity, i.e., crime. Um, and I just want to add too that the um, the early relationship between your community board and and us moved us in a direction to make sure that we could deliver everything that we said we were going to deliver and it's made us a better store. So, you, I mean, you, you, you should know that and that, you know, that type of community involvement from a community board level and or perspective was invaluable to us being a sustainable business. So I, I, if nobody else says it, I, I want to say thank you because I think we're at a place where there's growth and development um, based on a partnership with the community through the community board that I believe got us to a, a, a really good place that makes us actually a replicable model 
uh, throughout the state, quite frankly. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> and I second that, Robert. You're here. Yes, yeah, exactly. I, agree. Listen, I knew we would get here. So here we are. And, and it is a partnership. You know, we are a community, right? We are all part of this community. So we're, we're working together and it's just great. Um, I did have one question, though, that I didn't think of. In your exit package, do you or would you consider advising customers to steer clear of Union Square Park for their smoking enjoyment and reminding them that it is illegal to smoke in public parks? Are you doing that already or is that something you'd consider maybe doing? We're not doing that already. I have I have had a meeting with the Union Square Partnership, who's um, you know we're starting to build relationships with, and hopefully we can do some volunteering in that bid. Um, they've been super supportive. They haven't mentioned to me that I mean, who knows where the smokers from in the park coming from? Because a lot of people are in the park selling illicit cannabis. Um, but we're definitely happy to deliver that message for sure. Um, if we can. Yeah, figure out the best way to craft that message, but I'm sure we're we're happy to do that. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think as part of an education process around not only smoking in public spaces, but underage smoking and and all of those kinds of things. I think that's a valuable point to 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 have as a part of it. You know, a, a very robust education process for the community. So, I would be surprised if we didn't find a way to incorporate uh, that. In, 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 in the robust education process that we, we're engaged in. Wonderful. Um, and yeah, that was just a little suggestion and a little question, a little suggestion. Um, John Sullivan has asked when our next meeting is. Um, well, we may not have an, our next meeting until September. We know that we have an application coming in in September for a dispensary in Soho but that's all that I can tell you. And as things have, things go and have been going with dispensaries in this city, that may or may not happen. But um, please sign up for our mailing list and you will be alerted to all of our meetings. Uh, and if that's all, we can go into, oh, stipulations. Um, let me just run them by you quickly. They are pretty much the same as before. The original stipulations. Um, and I will share screen so you can actually actually look at them and then we will be done. There will be no back and forth. So So premises will operate as a dispensary selling allowable cannabis products and cannabis paraphernalia to consumers per state law. Hours are 9 a.m. to 11, 9 to 12 for a total of 95 hours a week. Um, you will not operate a consumption lounge. You will not operate outdoor area or sidewalk for any purpose. Keep doors closed other than entrance and egress, stanchions and ropes as necessary. No patrons outside, uh, no inside after closing, um, prevention of loitering. This is all stuff you're already doing. Um, customer ingress and egress through 835 Broadway only. Um, deliveries, trash, that's not going through Broadway. That's gonna go through that new entrance, right? Yeah, that's fine. Um, DOB regs, music background only, no private events. That was per you. Are you sure? Well, the, the events we may try to roll out um, is the educational events in the smaller space. We definitely won't be doing any private events in this new location. Okay. But they won't be private. They'll be for the public. Okay, I'll tweak that. To okay, thank you. Um, applicant, and you're, you're checking IDs for state law, and you'll come back if you make any 
changes in your method of operation. Um, interestingly, we were trying to figure out what this is. Is it an alteration? Is it a transfer? If it were SLA, it would be a removal, technically, is what it's called. Mm -hmm. But I did find in the revised proposed regs, it is an alteration of an existing licensed premises. It's there. Mm -hmm. So now we know. <laughs> um, so great. And stop share. So are you guys okay with all of those? Yes, definitely. Yes. All right. Um, and I'll just address Pete's question. Yes, the revised regs, which I will put in the chat momentarily. Um, and you can read them. And that's all. And if that's all, we're going to go into business session. And thank you so much to representatives. For, oh, wait, John McDonald. I did not say hi. He's here. Oh, he just did he leave? I'm not. I just wanted to acknowledge him, um, John McDonald of the Doe Fund. Um, thank you for coming. And he has also been a great partner in this journey of ours. So hats off to you. Um, all right, we're gonna go into business session. I am going to demote you. You are more than welcome to stay, but only committee members participate. And uh, thank you. Thanks again. We'll thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Jennifer. Okay. Hello, committee. So you have all seen the resolution and the steps. Any additions, questions? I, I tried to get everything done before the meeting. This time. <laughs> William? No, I mean, I think this one's very straightforward. It's just to, they're just, you know, have the new location, same hours, and everything else is pretty much the same. I would love to hear how much they're generating, but I'm, I'm sure we'll learn that soon enough. But I'm, I'm fine with, uh, with the reso that you sent. Great. Thank you. Anthony? If you would stop yelling, I would appreciate it. <laughs> I took a look at it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, so if that's all, um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Do we vote on it, Mar? All in favor say aye. 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 Now you're stacking. <laughs> um any nays hearing none the resolution passes committee now do we have a motion to adjourn so moved so moved second thank you all um we will i'll see you again in september unless oh yeah, yeah. all right thanks mar Bye. Bye guys, have a great summer. I don't know. Oh,
be great just to hear 